Hey everyone, Chuck's here. We're going to be looking at this coffee machine. It's a DeLonghi Prima Donna model. Now, I've got to repair it. I don't like seeing things like this going to the recycle or to the tip, mainly to the tip because people just throw stuff out and myself nowadays I like rebuilding things and having them there if I need them. And with the planet throwing away plastics and stuff like that, we don't need to throw all this stuff away. We just have to replace some parts in it and it'll be good for another couple of years. So please follow along, um, enjoy my critique of the actual unit and how to fault find it. And don't forget, if you're doing this, make sure you disconnect the power at the start and don't do this if you don't feel confident. Take it to a repairman. But remember, we're saving the planet by repairing. And uh, upgrading's not always the best. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. And so enjoy the show. Here's what we've got. We've got, I bought this coffee machine quite cheaply. It's a DeLonghi Prima Donna. And it's definitely a prima donna. It's, um, I had it open. First thing I made is a black coffee. It worked fine. The black coffee worked absolutely fine. Then my wife came up to me and said to me, it's not working. I'm trying to descale it and it's filling up the bottom tray. Now the bottom tray was filling up from the back here all the way into here. So what was the problem? Well, I had to fault find it. First thing I did was I turned the machine off and when the machine is totally off and switch off from here, you can take this module out here. This, and I gave it a good clean. Well, actually it did have a clean, but now it's got some coffee on it. I don't know where that came from, but anyway. So it wasn't the problem. This thing here goes in here. And what I did was, I couldn't see what was going on because the door was shut and that, this was in the bottom here. Like that. And the door was shut as well, which I'm not going to do at the moment. I think that's a bit high. Um, we'll look at that in a minute. Yeah, anyway, it was shut. This had the cover on here and the water tank, which is, here's the water tank that sits in the side here, right, <clears throat> was sitting in there. So the first thing I did was, I realised that if I don't have this in, this sensor here will activate and tell you that it hasn't got this, the actual connector, this connector in there to stop it from uh, going off. So, sorry about this, I've got bits and pieces everywhere because I've been repairing it. So that usually sits above that and clicks in the position. So I got that sorted out. And I took this off to check that there was no water cutting through here because I never touched one of these before but they're not that hard. If you're a technician, you should be able to do this. So what I did was I took this out, got it out of the way for the moment. I put it back in when I was testing it. I unscrewed, come in here. I unscrewed this bit here. There's three screws here. There's one small screw down there and there's two up the top. And I use this to engage the actual reed switch, which is inside the unit. I don't know whether you can see that either. Up the top there. And that showed me that the water was leaking down through here and dribbling across here. So what was it? Where was this water coming from? Okay, let's have a quick talk about what we've got. All right, so. Let's start here. There's no water over here, but we'll start here. 
we've got our power supply here. So if you've got no power to the front of your unit, look at that. That's the first thing I'd be looking at. And I don't think it doesn't have a fuse on it that I can see, but there could be a fuse. I haven't looked at the power supply, it's fine. It's not what we're looking at today. All right, that's the first thing. Now, this gets hot up the top here. I don't know whether it's hard to get you guys in the right spot. That gets hot up the top there. And why does that get up top, get hot? Well, the reason it gets hot is because you've got your water heater up the top here and it's right underneath this plate here. All right. Now, a lot of people say that this usually stuffs up. So the first thing you do is you need a multimeter and you need to put it onto ohms. And you press continuity check. And the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna check, you're gonna check these two bimetal fuses. And they should be, should hear a beep on the continuity check or zero ohms. And this one's another one. And that needs to be zero ohms too. The next thing we need to do is take it off continuity check, go back onto ohms on your meter, and check the two. You can take one of these off, but I didn't bother. Check what type of volt uh, ohms there is there. So it's around about 60 or 55 ohms. So that's a thousand watts. So divide a thousand, uh, thousand watts by 240 volts here in Australia, or in America, you'd be looking at 110 um, if it's the same sort of system. Now, the next thing it told me to do was to, these ones here have got the same thing, except the, the, the um, fuses, bimetal fuses are here. So I popped, pin down there and then I check the other end so it's a bit hard on this you can take these off you could probably unscrew those two screws and get to it but both of these you can <coughs> um, I can say they're both shorted out so I won't be able to do the but you need to do it on continuity check for that all right so this is what they call the engine in this case. It's actually a boiler, another boiler sitting under here. With, and the, to test it, you take one of these pins off and you put the multimeter on resistance. So take it off continuity test and put it on resistance. So you press the yellow button in this case. Different multimeters have different ways of putting them on. So you should, should learn how to use a multimeter. I haven't taught you that on this channel, but yeah. Anyway, you just check the resistance across these two here, and I've got it, still got it on continuity test because you could hear the beeping noise. Okay, so the resist resistance here is about, it's saying 40 ohms, 46 ohms. Now, I ended up having to take one of, the, one of these pins off one of the connectors off to get the right resistance. The resistance should be around about 80, 88 ohms. So 88 ohms is what you should be getting on that. So that, so you check your bimetal strip, which is a fuse, these two, and then you check that you've got 88 ohms across the two, and I'll show it on this one across the two wirings. This one, you won't get the problem. The other one, you will. This is the actual boiler, and that produces the steam for the front, for the frothing of the machine. These two here are your overflow tank. So the overflow tank, it gets rid of that. Now, the unit down the bottom here is actually the grinding motor and there is actually a belt down the bottom of it so check that because belts do break 
our next thing that we look at, when the water's pumping, you've got a filter here, and then around in here, if I can get that out of the way, around in here, you have the pump. So if there's no water coming through here, you'll see no water gushing through. So that would be a telltale sign that your two pressure tanks or your engine and your pressure tank aren't getting water. And that water comes through this solenoid here, the red solenoid. Now, I had to take all these screws out. So there, there was two, two screws on either side. So these go on like, like this. So you have to lift them up and they've got little keyways. So you have to put the keyways, the keyways in. So when you're taking it apart, you've got to take the two screws out, lift it, bring it back, then drop it down so that you can get the keyways out without breaking them. Now, to get to this bit here, you need to take the back off first. So the back here, you've got two screws. Now this one's got, oh, the back's up that way. You've got two screws and you've got your cordage hole. Now, some of these models have two screws up the top and then you've got the screws on the side which I had to take off so I could lift everything up and get inside, inside the unit which I still have to put it back together again later on which I might put the top bit back on I don't need that off anymore so that's what I'll be doing but you don't want to undo the one, two three screws in there, leave them alone and in here is where you put your powder so we're not going to touch that now that's about all I can say about this unit at the moment except for this now I put the unit either on continuity test but and you'll test for open, open circuits but really what you want to be doing is ohms so you can see, if I put my multimeter across there and I see nothing happening, right? That's an open circuit. Now, if it was short circuit, it would go like that. Now, if I was testing this and I was getting a short circuit, that would be a problem too. And check, that's the earth down the bottom. It's not hooked up in this case. And that's not hooked up anyway. But that's open circuit. What's happened here is, this is your steamer relay, or solenoid. It's a solenoid, not a relay. And this is your overflow here. And this here, if you can't see it, is all the bubbles coming out of the, the it's a coil to move a piece of metal up and down through here. It's overloaded and it's, blown itself up. So I now need to find this. I'm having problems trying to find it at the moment. And one that goes up the sideway, sideways up there. So if anyone knows where I can get hold of one, please leave me a message. Other than that, try eBay, try AliExpress to find the parts, um, or try the web to find parts. This here, the bottom, um, Overflow tube, it hooks up to the front up there, and that's where the water was coming through. So that's the water that was dripping down onto, onto the, um, the tray that I've got over there. So that's about it for uh, having a look at the Prima Donna, which looks in worse, worse than where than it should be but it'll be back together and it'll be making me a nice coffee soon enough. Uh, the carafe on these are, I think, around about 70 or $80. And that's all I can tell you about this unit. If you're looking for any more information, uh, look online. You can find the uh, circuit, not the circuit diagrams, but the actual parts 
online and it tells you what the numbers of the actual parts are uh, and that will help you to locate your parts. I don't want to see people getting scolded or electrocuted using this equipment. So I have this equipment disconnected. I don't need it connected to test the parts. All right, that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed this one. I'll catch you soon. Uh, more to follow on our shed build. Okay.